Hello, this is Dr. Moyer, and we will be discussing women in disadvantage in this PowerPoint. I should apologize ahead of time because I have a cold again, and it's affecting my voice. Hopefully I don't have a coughing fit. So we are going to talk about gender roles and beliefs, women in poverty, work-life balance, and inequality in pay practices. So basically, gender roles and beliefs are at the, they're the foundation for why women are not paid as much as men in the workplace. Um, there are roles that women typically hold in the family, like child care, um, caregiver, chef, <laughs> house cleaner, um, etc. And because of these roles, there tends to be a belief that women belong in the home or if they are working outside of the home they don't need to earn as much money because it is the male's job to be the breadwinner. Um, there's also beliefs about women that women are not as strong as men. Um, women can't handle leadership positions because of menstruation. Um, that women are too emotional to be in leadership roles and that moves us into female traits um, and characteristics and those are used against women to justify not moving them up. Um, and also what we consider appropriate for women and what we don't. If a woman is in a leadership role and she's firm and strict, oftentimes she is labeled as a bitch where if a man displays the same type of behavior, he's considered an effective leader. And so all of these underlie the women's status in society and why women are not paid as much and why women are at a greater likelihood of living in poverty. So women in poverty, um, why? <laughs> Well, we just discussed the gender roles um, and beliefs and how that affects women's status. Women are paid less. They're paid 79 cents for every dollar that men earn for the same work with the same level of um, education and experience. Women are discriminated against, which affects their ability to earn money and to head a household um, effectively financially because of discrimination against them. Um, women are primarily responsible for child care and caregiving and so that affects their ability to take positions that either put them in the work world or workforce um, while their children are at home or even while their children are in school or daycare because if they get a call that their child is sick they're the ones that have to leave and go and get their child um, and so if in an end if someone stays home if the children are sick it's typically the woman that takes a day off to stay home and care for them women are more likely than men to accept low-paying jobs with fewer benefits um, that's just a fact that's what the research shows Women typically do not have as many economic resources as men. It's getting better, but still, on average, men have more credit or line of credit. Um, they own more land, houses. Men are more likely to get a family or a bigger family inheritance than women, etc. And this affects women's ability to build um, financial stability over time. Women have to abide by rigidly ascribed social roles. So we just talked, we just discussed that in the previous slide. And women are more likely to experience sexual assault, abuse, and relationship violence, which can result in mental health issues, um, physical or sexual. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Physical and sexual injuries. Um, makes women more likely to call in sick in the workforce because of these experiences. 
women fleeing violent relationships are more likely to end up homeless than any other group of women and also to be cut off from resources that they previously had through their abuser. And so um, because of the greater likelihood to experience assault and abuse, this puts women at risk in the workforce. Women in work life. So the work life balance refers to the ability to balance home life and work life um, effectively and feel satisfied with that balance. Women report that they're more adversely affected than men, and there are many reasons for this. Um, some of the reasons we've just been talking about. So women are primarily responsible for the housework, childcare, cooking, shopping, um, sending cards or gifts on special occasions, go attending parent-teacher meetings, helping with homework, socializing with family and friends, or at least being in charge of the socializing, and relationships within the family. And so that's a lot more on a woman's plate when it comes to um, family relationships and, and managing the, the family environment compared to men. And so having the greater responsibility means that there's more work. And Hosschild referred to this as the second shift. Women um, who work coming home and then starting their second shift, which is being a mother and a wife. Um, women are more likely to work in service industry jobs and other female dominated fields that are stressful, um, don't pay as much, they're not valued as highly, and typically don't include benefits. And that is the fastest growing industry. So more and more women, particularly women being moved off of welfare due to the 1996 welfare um, revision will because they don't have other skills, accept service industry jobs and have to deal with schedules that are not consistent, um, having to work odd hours, that puts a strain, particularly on women that are single and heading the household because they have to find childcare. Um, and again, don't offer benefits. Many of these places will keep people right at 32 to 35 hours so they don't have to give benefits um, and they don't pay very well for these types of jobs and then of course women are more likely to be discriminated against in the workplace and in the home and so their work life is not going to be as pleasant so inequality in pay on average women make 79 cents for every dollar that men earn why is this the case? When I started teaching in 2005, um, that figure was 77, actually it was 76 cents. So it's gone up three cents in 11 years, and that's very slow <laughs> progress. Um, it's not fast enough, and it's actually quite shocking when you think about it. We are in 2016, um, and women who have the same amount of experience and education should be paid exactly the same as men. It doesn't make any sense. So why is this the case? Well, wage secrecy is still legal. Um, and what this means is that employees can be fired um, or face some type of punitive, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Punitive sanctions for discussing their wage on the job. So many companies have a secrecy policy about it. And if they tell somebody how much they make, and that person is like, whoa, they started after me and don't have as much experience or education. So they'll go and demand, you know, or try to get a raise. Um, so this is a way that companies can get away with paying people who don't have the skills to negotiate as well as those that do. Um, they're able to pay them less. And on average, it is women that are not as skilled in negotiation. 
there is um, a famous study that looks at offering men and women five to ten dollars for completing a survey or answering questions and they tell them this initially the researchers say we will pay you five to ten dollars and then they ask them in the end you know how much would you like and women are more likely to be content and say five dollars men are more likely to say ten dollars <laughs> um, and men are more skilled at negotiation only because they're socialized that way so that is something that society can do and work on is teaching women the skills to negotiate. Suing is not practical. It's expensive. It takes a long time. Many people are not in it or able to handle suing a big company when it takes five to ten years. Um, and so they don't pursue that. When you take home less, you stay home more. So if you stay home more, um, that's less experience that you have. And it also affects, even if it's not less experience, it affects how an employer looks at the resume. You know, what were you doing during this time that you weren't working? Uh, women's work or the roles that women play in the workforce are still um, not as valued as highly as men's work and pay less. Discrimination still exists. Um, companies fail to address unfair pay practices. They may be well aware, um, but it works to their advantage because they can pay some people less than others. And they are able to do this because current laws are inadequate. So our last slide deals with public policies um, that are designed to protect women in the workforce. We had the Equal Pay Act of 1963, and that made it illegal to pay men and women differently for the same job with the same amount of experience and education. Unfortunately, for those reasons that we just talked about in the previous slide, um, wage secrecy, sewing's not practical, blah, blah, blah. That makes it um, difficult to sue and even to prove if there's a wage secrecy law and it's allowed, um, how can you prove that women are paid less? The second public policy designed to protect women in the workplace is Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. It concerns sexual harassment. Women are far more likely to be sexually harassed on the job than men. You have two types, quid pro quo and a hostile work environment. Quid pro quo is when an employee is asked to do something um, in exchange for more money or the ability to keep their job or a promotion. Um, so you do this for me, I will do this for you. A hostile work environment, on the other hand, can actually be um, filed by anyone who is in a place where sexual harassment is occurring even if it's not directed towards them. Um, so if you work in an environment where the manager is harassing a couple of women, maybe not you, um, that makes for a hostile work environment and you can file um, and you can complain of sexual harassment because of that. Um, it also concerns we learned with the Clarence Thomas hearings, um, probably before most of your time, but even things like dirty jokes, um, hanging pictures of naked women or, or inappropriate pictures um, can also create a hostile work environment. If someone feels uncomfortable, it can be considered a hostile work environment. Then finally, we have the fa pay, blah, sorry, Paycheck Fairness Act which was introduced in 2006, um, has a lot of Democratic support, but very, very, very little Republican support. And to date, it still hasn't passed. It keeps going around, keeps getting updated, changed, but it hasn't passed. If it, w if it did pass, um, it would actually 
make wage secrecy illegal. And of course, companies don't like that, so lobbyists are doing a really good job of keeping this act from passing because they want to protect companies that pay them to do that. Um, and that would mean that companies would no longer be able to fire or punish employees if they talked about how much they make. And of course that increases the likelihood of everyone being paid the same. Um, and that's not something that a lot of big companies want or even little companies. So that act hasn't passed. I continue to watch it. Uh, I check on it every year to see what the status is and hopefully we will see that pass, but I don't know. It's been 10 years, so not sure it will. That concludes this lecture um, on women in disadvantage. I hope that you learned something, and I hope that you enjoyed my gravelly voice. <laughs> Joking. Um, okay, that's all.